people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Look, I'm not going to be too long. I'm going to be brief. I got a lot to do this morning. Uh, it's Saturday, March 6th. Uh, it's early in the day. Um, been up for a while. Um, and I just wanted to touch on something, something that I have shared quite a bit on, something that I've been intensely engaged with over the course of the last say five years and that is the usurpation of the grassroots movement in Ferguson uh, by specifically a number of different nonprofit organizations but specifically Black Lives Matter and how they diverted uh, essential funding for a grassroots movement that had developed a force like we hadn't seen in our lifetime and aimed it at the LGBT community, the feminist movement, uh, the funding of black faces in certain political positions, but not for what it was, uh, what, what, what it pulled away from in Ferguson, which was the senseless slaughter of young black males, specifically by law enforcement officers. Uh, so much has happened since then, so many lives lost, so much has gone on that sometimes this moves under the radar that uh, something like, first of all, the, the hashtag Black Lives Matter started long before the organization itself, the nonprofit organization. The very hashtag was usurped and taken on and used uh, to build quite a bit of force, political clout, uh, financial maneuverability, uh, a number of different things, uh, but it took away from something that was in, uh, unique and important, and that was the force developing and building in Ferguson. Um, we heard from people who were truly grassroots activists during that time that Black, Black Lives Matter was doing this. We heard from uh, Neota Yura. We heard from Darren Seals. Darren Seals lost his life exposing the true nature of the nonprofit industrial complex, specifically Black Lives Matter, and those attaching it, uh, themselves to it and those mimicking its movements and its strategies as it pertained to Ferguson. And so now we're here a number of years later, uh, 2021, some six years plus later, and we have this thing where certain truths are starting to surface. Uh, it's, it's, it hasn't remained suppressed because of a lack of effort. I've spoken on it numerous times. Uh, I've talked about the senseless murder of Darren Seals more than once and why uh, we should have been more actively engaged in what was going on in Ferguson, uh, why we should have just not only listened but became an active part of what's going on. I've talked about the work being done uh, by uh, Neuta Yora as far as alt-black uh, news media. Uh, I'm proud to be a part of alt-black news media. Uh, it is a counter to what's going on on social media where the black voice is being suppressed and pushed back, where we are losing our ability to speak um, unapologetically, fluently, and honestly about the things that are happening in politics, in social structure, in finance, and in so many other areas in which we are impacted. So I am proud of it. I'm proud to be a part and invited in by uh, the person whose brilliant mind is behind it, Neota. Matter of fact, how I came across Neota was a very close friend of mine, Dr. Michael Blanchard told me that she had been syndicating 
my work from my previous channel uh, on 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 a number of her platforms. She was syndicating, was pushing it out, and that uh, I had gained gained a pretty uh, decent footing and awareness. People knew of me that I didn't know were aware uh, that they were aware of me because of the work of this uh, person. This person is connected to some very uh, powerful black entities in the Chicago area. She, she's from the St. Louis area. Uh, so all up in that corridor, she's put her footprint and her handprint on it. She was speaking as loudly as possible when Black Lives Matter was gutting the grassroots movement in Ferguson and no one would listen. And here we are now, and I'm talking about this because of something that took place earlier this week. Uh, or maybe it was at the end of last week and I just decided to kind of sit on it for a while I wanted to see where it went and of course uh, it was crickets uh, Michael Brown Sr. Uh, called out Black Lives Matter and demanded that they give his organization um, 20 million dollars of what they've taken from uh, and literally siphoned from that grassroots movement that had so much force, so much power. And my first uh, impression of it was he's not asking for enough, not even close to what he should be demanding based off of what they've taken and how they've used what happened to his son, specifically what happened to Mike Brown Jr. Uh, in the streets of Ferguson. And you and, and, and they've used that to literally build the public of mil not just millions but billions in in my estimate at the rapid pace that they've been raising money over the last six years you know they haven't been able to effectively and honestly answer the questions of where did all the money go well we know where a great deal of it went we know that it went towards pushing the LGBTQ agenda you could see that by what was on their site early on it went towards pushing a feminist agenda we know that by what was on their site we know that if we visited their site early on we could see that while the very movement that pushed and funds their organization was about the murder of young black males it was hard to find the mention of a straight heterosexual traditional black male or traditional black family in any of the rhetoric listed on their sites we we know that if we actually decided to sit down and observe and to look in deeply and read and research and try to gain an understanding of who they were what they were about we understand by the faces that they put out in front that they had an agenda uh, the D-Rays and, and so many more that just simply gave you a, a clear sight of where they were headed, what they were doing and what was important to them and that they had to be guided by someone or something greater than themselves. They've been used and what I can tell you is going to happen is that when the, when the, when the fumes clear and there's no more leverage that can be gained for them they will be sacrificed and we will find out that a great deal of them will probably be doing prison time for fraud. Uh, we, 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 we know that and it's going to be a lot of other stuff that comes out. My point that I want to bring home in this is real simple. We've got to do a better job of supporting the grassroots movements. Uh, we like big names. We like sensationalism. We like things that blow up. But very rarely are those things attached to the one, the, the real roots uh, that are actually at work. Very rarely are the organizations who have really truly got boots on the ground that are really tr tr that are really truly putting their lives at risk. That are really truly putting their livelihood at risk. I have lost a great deal in the way of livelihood by being unapologetically a voice for my people. I have lost it in my own business because I've had clients that say they can't be associated with me based on some of the things that they've been able to find on the internet about me and they some have just simply broken off, others have demanded that I uh, retract statements or back up or just simply calm down moving forward and my answer is unequivocally no. I'm a black man first. Yes, I'm a businessman, but I'm a black man first. Uh, 
And if I can allow money to guide me, I can never be what my people need me to be. And that's a sacrifice. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not telling anybody, anybody owes me anything. But what I can tell you is when you've got people that's willing to do the things that are absolutely necessary for us to have the things that we need and we don't get behind them, but we get behind the big names, the, the uh, uh, nonprofit industrial complex, the United Ways, the Red Crosses, the uh, Black Lives Matter, all of these things that are thrown out in front of us. We recognize the name. It gets hot. It's got a little push behind it. We get behind it. We never ask the question, what are the people on the ground doing? What are the people on the ground saying about these organizations? If we would have listened to the people on the ground, if we would have listened to Darren Seals, he would have told you that don't ever... You would have heard him say unequivocally, don't ever associate me with Black Lives Matter. I'm not a part of that, would never be a part of that. He told you who they were right up front. We didn't listen. And we pay it, we, we're paying the consequence because so much of the money that went into Black Lives Matter never saw the black community. The vast majority of it never saw the black community. What did, what little bit that the black community saw was in the way of creating PR uh, PR images and illusions it wasn't real true work I know because I've been doing the work I know the people who have been doing the work I know the work that Neota has been doing with uh, Fred Hampton Jr. in Chicago I, I know the work, and I know that none of these major organizations are putting anything behind it. I know the work that Neota has been doing with cre creating alt black media outside of the normal social media structure where we can keep a voice going even if they should try to shut us down on social media. I know that no major outlet that has been taking money from the black community is supporting her in that. I know that the work I do with black li I mean with black men lead is getting no external support from any of these organizations. I know that what I've done over the past 15 years is fund 98% of the programs that I have designed and created through my research. We can't continue that way. And I think that uh, Mike uh, Brown Sr. should be asking for well over $100 million from Black Lives Matter. They siphon quite a bit more than that from the black community and, community and the black struggle, primarily attached to his son's name. And the outrage drawn from that. We need to be aware. We need to do a better job of being cohesively uh, engaged in what is taking place in our community and what is going on and who is doing what. And we must be actively involved in being a part of the solution and not just sitting around complaining and jumping on every moving train going by thinking that it's going somewhere without truly testing it, without truly looking inside of it. You know, look, look, I mean, when you look at it, we were here long before Black Lives Matter and we'll be here long after it has died and gone and it's, it's front men are doing prison time. We've got to do better. But when it comes down to Michael Brown Sr., I think that he and other groups primarily centralized in Ferguson and St. Louis and in that area need to be demanding a whole lot more from Black Lives Matter than $20 million. I think we need to start thinking bigger. I think we need to really start looking at in a forensic, from, from a forensic pers perspective, just how much they've taken and how much of that should have been left to the people who were really doing something, the people who were actually really truly connected to being a difference maker in that. How many people were shut down and lost in the, in the shuffle because of what they did? That's what we need to be looking at. That's what I'm calling on. Look, I'm going to be here. I'm going down swinging in this thing. I love my people. I love my family too much to have a have have my legacy say I stood by I stood down I went along to get along I got my piece of the pie I got my cut and so I was good 
No, that's not how I'm going. I'm going to ride with people like Dr. Michael Blanchard. I'm going to ride with people like Leota Yora. I'm going to ride with people like Diala Kenyatta. Michael Jordan um, Jr. out of Houston, a guy that once was a mentee, is now a good friend, uh, whose boots on the ground constantly. It's not it's not uncommon for me to meet up with him and he's got a homeless person in his car he done picked up and looking for somewhere to set him up. He's that kind of person on so many levels, a heart of gold, but a warrior and ready to do whatever it takes without fear. Those are the people I'm riding with. Derek Muhammad, another brother out of Houston doing exceptional and extraordinary things. Smarten up black men. Smarten up black youth, smarten up black boys. He's doing that thing on a regular basis in Houston. Those are the type of people who need support and funding, who find it hard to get what they need because everybody's jumping behind the uh, nonprofit industrial complex. Nonprofit organizations that aren't really truly funding anything that is of any true intrinsic value to the black folk. Time for a change. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Um, if you're looking for a way to support the work that we do, that's always going to be in the description box. Uh, I'm going to try to my best to get Neota on here, and she's going to tell you how to support uh, alt black media and some of the things that we're doing. And, and of course, I, I try not to put her out there too much because what we need to do, that's some things that need to go under the radar, but we also need to support. But she has a brilliant mind and she has an uncanny ability to take all the knowledge she has and make it make sense. She is a force and it is an honor to know her. And I want more people to get behind the people like Neota. They're not on the forefront with the big pictures and the billboards. They're the people who are literally putting their hands on the pulse of the needs of the people. That's what we've got to be. And on that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Again, I appreciate all the love you've shown me over the years, but it's time to really put in work. On that note, I'm out. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.